All right, happy St. Patrick's Day. I'm going to talk about problem CT19 today. This was our entry task in class the other day, and quite a few questions about how to set this up correctly, and some little details were missing, I noticed, as I walked around the room. So I wanted to make sure everybody understood this three-way table. So here is CT19. Set up a three-way table to solve the following equations. Show your work in each part, and there's an example. So all this is straight out of your book. There's an example right there in your book, and this is so useful having that example there. So in future problems with a three-way table, remember CT19, in addition to this video, you've got an example right there in your book that shows you all the details, and of course we also took notes in class when I taught this for the first time. All right, to the paper. Zoom out a little bit. And what I've done is I've written down the first two pieces of this problem. I figure two examples will be fine. Three-way table. We set it up sort of like a guess and check table. Big line across the top. Fraction bar model is going in the first section. And then a line straight down. In the middle, we're going to write an equation using the fraction bar model. So we need to make the fraction bar model first. We'll write an equation in terms of x. And then finally, we'll write a different equation that has a coefficient in it that represents one part of the fraction bar model. And we'll solve by dividing the coefficient. Here we go. The first one, 1 third of x is 24. Fraction bar model starts with a rectangle. That is x. That is the whole, right? The whole thing we call x. Finally, one third of that. The denominator here tells me how many pieces to break x into. Break it into three pieces. Two lines will get the job done. Each one of these pieces is worth one third of the whole. So we need to represent each piece with a fraction. And then finally, one third or each one of these small pieces of the whole is 24. So I'm going to label a numeric value on one of those pieces. So you can see how this fraction bar model actually gives you the equation, right? We can work both ways from this. One third of x, one third of the whole is 24. Bam, right there, it's all labeled. This is the part that the equation is talking about. Now let's make an equation from the model. As we learned in class, we're going to put this in terms of x. When you hear this phrase, and you'll hear it a lot in the future, in terms of, that means in terms of whatever this thing is, we're putting it on the left side and putting it all by itself. Okay, in terms of x means we're starting with x on the left, everything else will go on the right. So this whole thing here is three pieces, one, two, three, of 24. We've learned many times that multiplication is another way of using the word of. And then if we solved that, we would get 72. Okay, then finally over here, solve by dividing the coefficient. This is where, for this problem, we're going to rewrite this. Okay, we have a coefficient, one-third of the whole thing is 24. I can solve this problem by dividing both sides by the coefficient. The effect is that on this side, how many one-thirds fit into one-third? The answer is one. You can see my giant one around here. And for us, this means that's 1x, right? How many 1 thirds fit into 24? Well, if 3 1 thirds fits into 1, then I need 24 of those, or 3 times 24. And you see how this will also give me 72. Okay, how many 1 thirds? fits into 24. That's the ant that's the question to ask when you're dividing by fractions. That takes care of the first piece. 
Let's do another example and then we will look at a pattern happening here and see if you can make a generalization so every time you get a problem like this you know exactly what to do. One thing I noticed first of all is hey the first time we took the problem and copied it over here let's go ahead and do that this second time. Two good reasons for that. One, we did it the first time and two, when I slide the paper up here equation is going to disappear, so we want to have it written somewhere. First I draw the rectangle. I'm going to split it into eight pieces. Why? Because the coefficient here tells me to do that. The denominator is eight. And I know there's eight pieces here. Seven lines. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now I should have eight pieces. Each one is worth one-eighth of the whole, right? I'm going to count them just to make sure I didn't make a mistake. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yes. And I need to remember to label the whole, right? That's x. And then each piece is worth 12, according to my original equation. Let's get a 12 in there. All right. So my fraction bar model says 1 eighth of x is 12. Okay. Now I need to solve in terms of x, so I'm going to say x is 8 pieces, each is worth 12. That's another multiplication word there, you can see the word each. That also means multiply. We've used of many times in class. And finally, that makes 96. Why? Because 8 times 10 is 80, 8 times 2 is 16 add them together. We use those mental math skills. And finally, to solve by dividing the coefficient, how many one-eighths fit into one-eighth? You are right. One. That is an ugly one, but it still works. We love all of them. Remember to do the same thing to both sides. Then our question is, since we know this is 1x over here, I bet you can guess that it's going to be 96. I know you're thinking that, but let's make sure. How many 1 eighths fit into 12? Well, we know it takes 8 of them to make 1, right? So 1 times 12, right? And you were right. You were right. You guessed it. It's the same answer. All right, there's the three-way table. There's the right way to do this. Hopefully that helps. Ah, and remember, you have a great example right there in your book, CT19, but now you have a working example step-by-step -step of how to get this done. Have fun and uh, get outside and run around. Get some of that energy out. All right, see you soon.